Hi everyone, my name is Nate. You are watching WASD20. Uh, yes, it really is Nate. It's not just some random pair of hands. Uh, in fact, wait a second here. Alright, let's try that again. Hi everybody, my name is Nate and welcome to WASD20. Yes, it really is me. I know my face looks kind of pink and... Uh... Hi everybody, welcome to WASD20, my name is Nate, and today we're going to be talking about how to draw better mountains. One of the questions I've gotten very often over the last year and a half that I've been doing maps is, how do I get my mountains to look better? Uh, can you give me some more instruction? And no matter what I do, I just can't get them to look quite like yours. So maybe I didn't do a very good job teaching on my very first time through in the fantasy map drawing series, that's totally possible. Uh, but I aim to fix that today and we'll really do some deep analysis of lots of different mountains trying to figure out what's wrong with these and how could they be better. So our focus today is going to be this ridgeline technique that I have uh, done on several of my maps, though I don't use it on all of them because honestly it's hard guys, it's really hard and it's intimidating for me actually uh, to do it sometimes and so sometimes I cop out and sometimes I actually prefer the look of other styles of mountains too and I'm just more confident in my abilities to really nail it with other styles of mountain. Still, the ridgeline technique is pretty awesome, it is desirable for many people and I aim to show you how to improve in doing so. So, one of the first things I demonstrated in my video is just kind of drawing a squiggly line representing a ridgeline. And I'm going to show you a common mistake that I've seen uh, many people make, and that honestly I have made to some extent too. And that is when you're starting your ridgeline, just sort of drawing a squiggly line like this, and there we go. Now, obviously the next stage is to draw lines coming out of the ridgeline that show the slopes of the mountain. So if we do that here, I am first of all focusing on the areas that stick out the most and I am accentuating them, making them stick out even further with these lines. But uh, now I can go back and I can do a little more detail in here as well. I'm doing, going pretty lightly with my pencil, but yeah, you can get a little more detail, uh, some other sorts of lines, maybe some lines that are meeting up like that, or like that, creating little shadows, and this is okay. It's a common technique that I've seen, and I've had many people send me maps saying, hey, what do you think? And they're, it looks something like this, and it's not terrible, but it certainly isn't great and there's a lot of room for improvement. So one of the issues you might be noticing here is if you just draw a random squiggly line, you're not going to end up with perhaps a very interesting ridgeline. And it might not be a very realistic ridgeline either. And the problem with this one is that it kind of looks like a wall. All right, it kind of looks like a wall. And we wanna make something that's more rugged and we wanna make something that has more peaks. That's the key here is that there really aren't that many jagged peaks in this mountain range. So if we wanted to, and we will go back and do this on a different ridge line, but you know, we would want to make some more jagged peaks in here. And so that's something. Don't just go in with a random squiggly line, but rather go in thinking, okay, where are there going to be some peaks in this range? All right. Now we have something much more interesting and honestly more realistic. And we can go in and we can draw those slope lines coming out from the most jagged points first, parts that stick out the most, and then we can always go back and add more detail later. So that's kind of the basic uh, tip that I will give. Now another thing, if we want to really, I want to really get self-critical here, uh, that I noticed on these mountains that I originally did on my map of Inchar, 
Now, there's a there's a lot to be desired here as I look back. Uh, and I know a lot of people love this map and think, wow, this is really great. Um, thank you so much. You're amazing and all this stuff. And I really appreciate that. But if I was just satisfied with that, and this is true of any artist, if you're satisfied with only the praise and um, are not self-critical, you never really get better. And I think that should be a goal is always getting better at it. So uh, for me, I definitely took this as a starting point, but wanted to improve over time. So one of the issues on my mountain ranges here is they are not very steep. My slope lines are going uh, almost horizontal sometimes, a little too much. And I wish that I had done them a bit more vertically uh, and just gotten a little steeper. I did in some places, but that's one thing that I noticed on these. And if we go back to actually, I, I even have this one. This was actually my very original uh, one that I did and I went back and changed it. You can see that I think it's somewhere between steps two and three, um, I changed it. Uh, so you can see some slight differences here. And the main reason here is because this was pencil and I wanted to do it all in ink. So the final product, the shading looks a little less nuanced, but uh, yeah, anyway, you can see that I was unsatisfied with these for a couple reasons. A, they were too big. I felt like they were making my continent actually feel smaller in that the mountains looked a little bit too big. And B, they looked a little too, again, horizontal. They almost started to resemble sand dunes to me, which, hey, this is a good technique for sand dunes. And actually, actually at one point, I was just kind of sketching around and, and drew some sand dunes like this. And so you can see, yeah, it's not a bad technique. You just kind of draw some more wavy lines and it can really work to give the impression of sand dunes. And often in a desert, I'll do just a couple here or there, kind of like that. And, um, and those will be the basis for some sand dunes in a sandy area. All right. If we can keep on being a little bit self-critical, here are some drawings that I did for the Be A Better Campaign Master Book 1, Building the World, which is available on AbsoluteTabletop.com. And I can't remember if these are the ones that made it into the final book or if these were just some practice. I have a feeling they were just practice. I did a, all kinds of, I was practicing all sorts of things for, uh, the book by Barker from Be A Better Game Master and Absolute Tabletop. And so anyway, if we want to be a little bit more self-critical here, you can see that overall these are pretty good, but when you're zoomed out this far, I think they did tend to have a little too predictable of a line here. And it might have been a little more interesting to vary it uh, and really kind of go nuts a little more. So that's just another tip. And I hi another thing I will highly recommend for you is to go watch Questing Beasts video on this technique and also Fantastic Maps. I will put links to both of those videos in the description below and I definitely recommend you check them out. In some ways I think those guys are a lot better than me at the ridgeline technique. Again, for me it can be kind of intimidating. Alright, so you have seen that this sort of random squiggly line is not great. All right, so what we want to do instead is be very intentional about getting some peaks in there and really switching things up. So we'll do that here. And I'm a little bit rusty and I'm not super confident in this technique, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, here we go. <clears throat> so there is a pretty jagged uh, mountain ridge line that has quite a bit of variation in it and some very intentional peaks. I'm pressing pretty hard with my pencil, so I'm not going to be able to get a ton of detail. And actually, while I'm at it, let's sharpen that thing. So what we are going to do here is now draw, again, we're going to take the parts that stick out the most, really. and that part sticks out that way so we're going to draw a line on that side and you can really vary uh, how steep you want them again if i draw them kind of like this it's going to be very a gradual slope um, a little more sand duny in some ways so uh, for my purposes i desire a little more steepness just because i think it looks cool and i'm focusing mainly on those parts that are again sticking out the most 
This right here is a little tricky because I have that angle that I maybe would draw right there naturally, but maybe I'll um, make it stick out a little more, a little less steep than I normally would because I want to see that slope. And I could always go back and erase it maybe and make it a little more steep and sticking out that way. In fact, let's let's do that. We're going to be perfectionists here and we're going to could absolutely go with it. So make it stick out a little more that way. And then we can really see that, <clears throat> excuse me, that slope on that side. Now here we don't have anything that sticks out too much. A little there. Another thing is you can see that my lines are all pretty uniform and it might be good to give them a little more variety. So maybe this one sticks out like that and then it goes steeper there. So you can see that adding some variety in there will also help. This right here I'm not a big fan of. It looks a little too much like a wall. So I'm gonna make it go like that and then like that. And I'm not gonna bother erasing. <laughs> All right, now this part right here is a pretty big peak, so I'm gonna make that. And you can also decide, you know, how far do you want these to go? The farther you go, the bigger the mountains will be. On a big peak like that, you probably wanna make it stick out pretty far. This, I could leave it there or I could keep it going. And that's another thing, you can kind of make it branching off in different directions. And that central ridge line might be a spider web of, might create a spider web effect toward many other ridge lines. Again, I'm not too happy with how that went, so I'm gonna make it sharper. Seem to have a lot of those on this one. So yeah, live and learn a little bit for sure. And this one feels right just to make another one out there. So again, in this initial pass, I am just kind of picking out the most obvious prominent ridge lines or, uh, or parts that are sticking out, I guess. That's how you would say it. And now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna get some more detail. So now we can go in here. And my lines don't have to be totally neat and perfect. I can kind of get a little, you know, I can do some kind of dashed lines in there. That's one thing that can kind of look nice is if I just actually take it like that. And this right here, I'm not super happy with how that went. So I will go have something coming out there and there and once in a while you can kind of do these little triangles like that um, I saw questing beast doing that quite a bit this right here might actually just kind of fade out into that mountain so maybe I won't have a line right there it's kind of, well, it's hard to erase now that I pressed so hard. <laughs> but anyway. So I'm just going in and I'm giving it a little more detail in areas where I think that's needed. Not quite sure what I was doing there. And we'll keep it fairly simple there. And here and there, 
I'm just drawing some kind of random lines. So a lot of this is just, you know, it's experimentation and analyzing others' maps. You know, go look at Max's maps. Go look at Fantastic Maps. Go to the Cartographer's Guild. Um, just Google Fantasy Maps. That's how I've done a lot of mine. Um, and yeah, there's there's so much just in, in kind of trying to mimic a certain style. And I've done that over and over. You know, just say, okay, today I want to try to, I, wanna, I really like the way those look. I'm going to try to mimic those. And uh, maybe that's mine, or maybe it's somebody else's. Um, and just try to go mimic what they're doing. Uh, another thing, just for try trying to draw improved mountain ranges, uh, sometimes draw some little hills. It's something that I, I didn't do much at first, uh, but maybe we have some, some foothills here, right? And uh, maybe those don't necessarily follow the, the ridgeline style that well. But I could go on and on. But this is a basic idea for, again, how to improve your ridgeline technique. Try to envision when you are drawing the ridgeline, try to envision where the peaks will be. And sometimes, you know, maybe you just draw a straight line like this and then you go back later and you, then you can add the peaks, right? Then we can go back and say, okay, here, here we go. And so you can draw that first one fairly lightly, get the basic path and then go in and add some kind of more jagged peaks. Oh, one thing I forgot to talk about is shading, of course, how could I? So with shading, you know, with a pencil, it's nice because you can just draw your ridge line and these lines fairly dark, and then you can go back and you can just kind of very lightly shade one side. You just pick a side where the light, you know, the light would be from that side, and this one, that's for some reason what I always do. <laughs> and uh, we would just kind of lightly shade one side. Uh, most of the, in most cases now, I am honestly doing digital mapping. Uh, one of the reasons I like it so much is because it does make shading so much easier. It just makes it easier to look good. And in addition to shading, I can actually go in and if I have like a parchment, I can get some highlights on that side to brighten it up a lot. And um, it just tends to give it so much di more dimension. So I'll throw a couple images here from my Valos map and also from my Aronoff map of how I've done that. You can see the shading and the highlights. And uh, again, that can be kind of cool. If you're interested in learning more about digitally shading mountains, I did make a video on that a while back and you can check that out. I'll put a little link in the card on the upper right. Check it out. It's totally possible to do it on paper and actually some people will use a neat eraser like this. Mine's getting kind of gross. It needs to be needed. It needs to be needed. And so if you do shade a lot on your map, then you can go back and use this and you can even bring it to a point like a pencil and, uh, and use that to get some highlights and uh, it can work pretty well. And it does make sense as I've covered in other videos to have a little bit of shading on the other side too in some of the, the valleys and the, the places where shadows would lie. And you can kind of make those places up in your little world. As we get close to wrapping things up here, I just want to say that if you're not doing very well with this and you're having a hard time, just keep on practicing and keep on experimenting and trying to find what works. And at the end of the day, if you just aren't happy with it, Choose a different mountain style. There are so many very simple mountain styles that still look really great. Ones that I often use myself. So find what works for you and just keep on having fun. 
Well, I could ramble on and on forever, but I better stop soon here. I just want to thank you very much for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I always love to hear from you. And uh, make sure you're following me on Facebook and Twitter as well. Um, put the links right here. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I have not done a map making video in a very long time. And it's good to be back doing this for you guys. Um, and yeah, if you enjoy this one, make sure you leave me a like. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. New videos every Wednesday. And everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.